Hello and welcome. If you've just started watching this video, hopefully you've wrapped up the first one, combining like terms, and now it's time to talk about inverse operations. Now it's important that we only use inverse operations when we're talking about equations. Combining like terms, we can use that whenever we want, but this is specific to the equation. So first, let's make sure we understand what makes an equation an equation. Down here, I've got a little definition of it, so let's read that together. The definition says, an equation is a mathematical statement which relates two quantities, asserting that the two quantities are of equal value and size. So what you know is basically saying what's on the left should equal what's on the right. So if I say 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that could be equal to 4. That it is true that all of those ones added together equal to 4. If I wanted to combine some of these ones, I would still have a true statement. 3 plus 1 still is 4. Now, what we're going to talk about now are all of the things that we can do to an equal sign that still preserve it being a true statement. So over here, I have a new slide, which is called a game. Really, when I'm giving you guys an equation, it's sort of like I'm playing a little game with you. I've already decided what the answer to the question is, like let's say the answer is going to be 5, but I've actually mixed it up a little bit so that you can't tell anymore. And as long as I use the same operations on both sides, I still have a true statement. So imagine I were to add 1 to both sides of the equal sign. I would have something like x plus 1 equals 6. What if I decided to add three x's to both sides of the equal sign. Well, now that would be something like 4x plus 1 equals 3x plus 6. And what we have is now a seemingly different statement, but in fact it has the same equality, that what's on the left is still equal to what's on the right. We can check this by saying to ourselves, well, let's just go back and see what happens when we put in 5. So if I were to put a 5 here and a 5 here, I would get 4 times 5, which is 20. Over here, I would get a 15. So is it true that 20 plus 1 is equal to 15 plus 6? Yes, 21 is equal to 21. Now let's pause for a moment. Now what I just did seems really, really silly, but what I'm trying to prove to you guys is there are things that we can do to an equal sign. If it doesn't look nice, we can change it, and these are called operations. I can add a number to both sides, I can add a variable to both sides, I can subtract a number from both sides, I can multiply a number on both sides, I could divide a number on both sides. In fact, I'm allowed to do anything to an equation so long as I do it on both sides because it's not going to change whether or not our answer is what it is or whether or not our statement is true. So let's talk about how inverse operations now play a role in what we're talking about. So when we're using inverse operations, our goal is to zero in on what our variable actually is. Remember, I've already played this game, but we don't know what it is to start. And so the way to think about an inverse operation is there are different layers to a problem, and we're trying to undo those layers. In fact, inverse is telling us that we're going in the opposite direction. So when we think about inverse operations, We're trying to undo uh, what has happened to the x variable. So if I look here, I only see one layer. It's this plus 5 right here. Now the way to make a, a plus 5 go away would be to subtract 5. And I know that if I subtract 5 on both sides, I'm not violating the equality. So lo and behold, those cancel, and I find out that x is equal to 7. And if I were to plug it back in, it is true that 7 plus 5 is 12. Here in this question, it's a little bit trickier because there's actually two things happening to x. 
we have a times 3, and we also have a plus 10. So now we have to make a decision about what to undo first. And this is where the layers come in, that this times 3 is a much inner layer than this plus 10 is. So we're going to want to undo this plus 10 before we try to undo this times 3. So let's put that into practice. I will undo the outermost layer, a plus 10, by taking away 10 from both sides, preserving the inequality. This will leave me with 3x equals 14. Now you can see that, well, how would I undo this times? It would be with a division. And it just so happens that we do not get a whole number answer when we do this question. That's just going to happen sometimes. Not everything's a whole number, and generally the reason why that is is because your math teacher's done some careful planning and made sure that that happened ahead of time. But just to let you know, fractions are nothing to be afraid of. In this last example, there's actually three layers right here. So here's the x. The next closest layer is this 2. The next closest layer is this plus 1. And then the outermost bigger layer would be that divide by 3. So I know the order I want to take care of them is, is I want to get rid of the divide by 3, then I want to get rid of the plus 1, and then I want to get rid of the times 2. So let's see that in action. I will get rid of this divide by 3 by using a times 3 on both sides. So I could say 3 times 3 goes away. 2x plus 1 equals 15. I can get rid of this plus 1 with a minus 1 on both sides. So 2x equals 14. And look at that. That's a lot nicer. I can get rid of this, this times 2 with a divide by 2. And it's much nicer because that does go in evenly. So when we're thinking about inverse operations, we have to make sure that we have a plan, that we're looking for the innermost layer and going all the way out till we find the outermost. And we have to go from the outside in. That's a pretty important feature right there. Now, what we're going to do next to wrap this up is we're going to work with combining like terms and inverse operations at the same time. Remember that we always want to try to combine like terms. Sometimes our problem's a mess, and we can simplify it by reducing the number of things that we need to think about it. So let's go take a look at these questions where we're combining our like terms and then applying our inverse operations. So for our first one right here, I notice that there's a lot more on the left side of the equation than there is on the right side of the equation. That's a big hint that I can get my combining like terms going. We have 3x's and we have minus 5x's in total. That would be minus 2x's. I see there's a plus 10 and a plus 2, so that's really plus 12. And now I can look at this and say, okay, everything's combined together that can be on the left, so let's start looking for those layers. This would be the inner layer, it's closest to the x, and this plus 12 is the outer layer. So I'm going to take off that outer layer, negative 2x equals 24. This time I'm going to divide by a negative 2, so in other words, x is negative 12. So that was a pretty good job there. In this next question, I noticed something a little different. We got parentheses. Well, we're going to have to distribute to undo these parentheses, if you will. 4x plus 4 equals 7x minus 64. In here, we have something that we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen when there are variables on both sides. Well, when you have variables on both sides, you got to decide which side you want them on and an inverse operation that's going to make that happen. Your first decision doesn't really matter, but all the decisions that you make after that will be affected. I generally like positive amounts of x's. So if I take away 4x's from both sides, I can see that that will leave me with 3x's, which is a positive amount. I'm just going to copy down the rest of the equation, which did not change. So there's a 4, and here's a minus 64. 
And again, I'm looking at this X for the inner layer and the outer layer. So I would need to add 64 to both sides. This would give me 68, which is equal to 3X. And again, when we divide to get rid of that inside layer, we can see that no, it's not a whole number. It's pretty close to a whole number, but it didn't quite work out. And that's just the way it is. Now, I didn't actually plan that. I actually wanted this to be a whole number answer, but I just created this problem too quickly, so that didn't happen. Oh well, guess I'm human. Over to this one, you'll see that we got two parentheses, and I made two parentheses here to highlight this one little fact, that when there's a three in front of the parentheses, we need to distribute. But if there's ever a minus in front of the parentheses, we have to be extra careful because we need to distribute that negative along with the number. So this is actually a minus 5, and when I do minus minus, that gives me a plus 40. So again, I've distributed, and I've come to the realization, whoa, there's a lot more on the left side of this equation than the right side of this equation. So that probably means there's some simplifying that can take place. I see that 3x's and minus 5x's would give me minus 2x's again. I see that 6 and 40 would give me 46. And so now that all of my terms that are alike are combined, I can start to think about the inner and outside layers and start using those inverse operations. So I could say, okay, minus 46, minus 46, that's the outermost layer. This will give me 30 four and dividing both sides by negative two would tell me that x is negative seventeen. Now for the most part the five questions I just showed you are gonna wrap pretty much most of your common situations that we're gonna talk about. Even though uh, fractions in terms of expressions don't pop up quite as much. I do want to share with you how we can still apply this principle of the inner layer going to the outside layer and that'll help us through any weird situation that we kind of find ourselves in. So let's take a look at those. Ah uh, yes, the less common situations. Goodbye camera. So notice here we got a small fraction and here we got a big fraction. But I know my job is to solve for what x is. So I'm trying to figure out what's the inside layer, what's the outside layer. Here is x. The innermost layer is this divide by 3. And the outermost layer would be this plus 7. So I now know what I need to do. I need to undo this plus 7 with a minus 7. So x over 3 equals 4. And I need to undo this divide by 3 with a times 3. So I will then do times 3. x is equal to 12. And if we go back, we can see that this works. If you do 12 divided by 3, you get 4. And it is true that 4 plus 7 is 11. So we are extra sure that that is our correct answer. Here, well, this has actually got a lot of layers going on it and we see some parentheses right here. So let's go ahead and distribute that. This would give me 6x plus 2 over 5 equals 4. Okay, now I feel a little bit more comfortable with this. So let's start finding those inner and outside layers. It looks like this inner layer here is a times 6. Then I have this plus 2 and then finally, the outermost layer is this divide by 5. So if I were to go backwards and undo what I see, of course, the erase tool seems to be not working for my benefit. Let's give it one more shot. Erase. All right, doesn't want to erase. No big deal. We'll start off by undoing the divide 5 with a times 5. So times 5, times 5, 6x plus 2 equals 20. We'll get rid of the plus 2 with a minus 2. Minus 2, minus 2, 6x equals 18. 
And I don't need to tell you that we're going to use a divide by 6 to get rid of that times 6. So x equals 3. Wrapping it all together. So there you have it. We just went from uh, 0 to 100 with inverse operations. Remember that an equal sign has a left side and a right side, and we're saying that they are equal. And we can always do the same thing to both sides of an equal sign, and it makes sure that it's true. Add 1, add some x's, subtract some x's. Divide, subtract, multiply, whatever you want, so long as you do the same thing on both sides, it's not going to mess with your problem in a nasty way. We also talked about the art of using inverse operations. You have to find the biggest outer layer and whittle your way down to the innermost layer till you find out secretly who X is. I'm going to upload an assignment. You guys have at it and make sure you talk to me about it. Good luck.